Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today. We're gonna to do something we don't normally do. We tend to do a lot of flowing movement. Today we're gonna to do a basic stretching video. We're just gonna stretch and hold and enjoy. So this might be nice if you go for a walk or do a workout and wanna stretch afterwards or as a wind down before you go to sleep. And on that note, we are gonna be doing poses lying down. Uh, if you're not a fan of lying down or getting down to the floor and then back up, you might actually like this one seated on the edge of your bed and then lying in bed when we do finally lie down. The floor is a really nice way to flatten out, um, but not always comfortable to get down and then back up. Uh, we won't be doing a lot of transitioning though from one to the other, so we'll start seated and then when we're down, we're down. So you be the judge of whatever space is best for you. And I'll give us a couple of options using a block and a strap in case you like one. I don't even have a yoga strap. I just have this stretchy band. If you have a belt, a scarf, anything is fine. Um, and if you don't have a block at home, um, a thick pillow might work or even a rolled up yoga mat. All right, here we go. Let's get started. We'll sit tall. Option to close our eyes. We may like to take a hand to chest and a hand to belly. Let's give it a few deep yoga breaths in and out. Feeling the expansion of our entire torso here. So as we breathe in, we feel the belly expand, the ribs expanding front side and back, and maybe a little lift in the shoulders, but not too much. So if you notice your shoulders are really heaving with each breath, let's see if we can slide shoulders down and back. And then encourage the expansion, our ribs moving out. Our chest moving forward, our back expanding, and the belly expanding. But we'll keep that length in the neck so the shoulders aren't moving up with each breath. And if the breath is feeling really restricted, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just information. And maybe by the end of our time stretching, we'll have stretched out and opened up enough to be taking a deeper breath with less effort. Option here, let's see if we can stretch the exhale out to be longer than the inhale. Full breath in, long breath out. This is designed to help us feel calmer, slow things down. So if that doesn't work for you, please breathe in a way that does feel calming. Let's do one more round of breath like this. We can release our hands, we can open our eyes. Let's give our shoulders a nice big squeeze up to our ears and then again sliding them down and back. We'll leave our shoulders as they are and let's do our best to leave our spine where it is. We're just gonna take ear to shoulder one way. We may like to close the eyes as we go. We may still be breathing in fully and then exhaling for longer than our inhale if that feels good. ready to come back up through center and we'll keep our spine exactly where it is just moving the head so if you notice your whole body moves with it we'll keep our shoulders where they are and just move the head in fact you might need to place a hand on your torso and make sure oh yeah just the head's moving it's not gonna hurt you if your spine moves just body awareness we should be aware of where our head is moving versus where our spine is moving
let's take one more round of breath in and out. And we're ready. Come back through center. Well, let's take the chin down to the chest. Again, we can keep our spine straight and just tuck the chin to the chest. And let's notice what kind of sensations are going on in the back of the neck and the rest of the body. Might feel a bit of a pulling across the upper back. Maybe we're noticing our breath in our backs more. We'll come back through center. And this one we'll do a little differently. We actually have a huge range of motion backwards, but we're not gonna use all of it. So if we just let the head limply pop off backwards, it's actually not so great for the spine in our neck. So we're gonna keep lengthening up and keep the muscles in our neck working. So before we go anywhere, notice everything beneath you. We're gonna press our bums down and press our feet down. Even if your feet are flat on the floor, if you're in a chair or the side of your bed, Press the feet down. This should help us give us some stability to sit tall. And then let's pull the nose back. Sometimes as we're watching um, someone teach yoga, we get like more involved by reaching forward with the chin. So let's pull it back, pull the nose away. And then from there, we'll lift up. Let's keep our shoulder blades towards one another. So we still have length across the collarbones. We might even like to take our hands to our collarbones to help us guide our shoulders back. And we can keep tipping the nose until such point as we feel we'll reach sort of a wall where we can't swallow anymore. So go ahead and test, see if you can swallow or hum. And if you get to the point where you can't breathe or you can't speak comfortably, that's another way to test. So our neck muscles are still working, supporting the weight of our heavy heads rather than just letting our heads flop back. Opening our hearts. Lifting from the center of the chest. Keep pressing down with those feet. And we're ready to come back through center. Now it might feel good to get a little bit of flowing going here, wherever the head or shoulders want to move. And let's come into our lateral flexion. So again, whatever is beneath us, we're gonna press down to lengthen up. We'll keep that length going. Let's go ahead and reach one arm overhand. And we're gonna open the side of the waist. So yes, we can just shift our hips with us, but let's keep, so if we have our right hand in the air, the right side of your bum is pressing down. And it's more important, I think, to open up our breathing space and less important to get as far over as we can. So let's focus on opening through the ribs and we might even like to take our opposite hand to the space that we've opened to help create a mind-body connection with our lungs and our torso expanding in this space. So it might feel like we're breathing into our underarms, we're kind of breathing into the bra line. And if it feels like a really far reach to bring it all the way across, we could always rest the arm, that's okay too. Often we imagine our lungs look like balloons, so we can imagine that we're sort of opening up a balloon in this space. And before our hand falls asleep, let's bring it down and we'll take it the other way. We're pressing down to lengthen our spines. And then my hope is that we can open up some space in here to breathe. You may have a different personal goal and that's okay too. Feel free to modify this however you like. If we wanna feel our own breath, we can take hand across the rib. Might feel again like we're breathing into our underarms. course we could rest our arm but let's hold and breathe 
maybe we're noticing discomfort and we can adjust to make it more comfortable. And it might feel really good and that's okay too. Keep pushing down to stay tall. And then we can shake our hand out. And we're ready to lie down on our mats or beds or wherever we are. And let's keep our step just sort of close by within arm's reach. And we're actually gonna start with our strap. So it's uh, a bit easier to ease our easier to ease our way down if we hold behind one leg to resist gravity. And then let's draw one leg into our chest. So we can start with the right leg in. If it's more comfortable or accessible, we can hold on top of the shin or behind the thigh. And our straight leg, we can actually push that foot down a bit to give ourselves more stability. And we might like to flex or point the feet. Here we go with our strap. Easier if we have longer arms, but we're going to take our strap around the underside of our foot, ideally under the ball of the foot rather than the squishy part of the foot. And we can press our toes into the strap if it's thick enough to get across our toes. And really the beauty of the strap is not that it's a crutch. It's not that we're not good at the pose, so we have to use a strap. Actually, if we're to hold the leg, see how my shoulders are coming forward, sort of like I'm slouching while I'm lying down. And this is the position that we're in all day when we're typing, doing dishes, texting, that kind of thing. So if I have the strap, I can now, hey, put my shoulder blade straight on the floor. I could leave my arms straight, or I can even rest my triceps back down. So we don't usually think about this in a hamstring stretch, but if you're working on those yoga push-ups, the chaturanga push-ups, this is a nice way to work on that form because we're in the same position that we should be in at the bottom of our push-up. Our elbows are at 90, our shoulder blades are down, and we can use the surface beneath us to help increase our mind-body awareness in the back of the body. So you thought this was going to be an easy stretching video, but really, we're working on our push-ups. And if we pull down, we're working our opposing muscle groups a little bit for push-ups. And if you never want to do a push-up in your whole life, it's okay. So if we want to pull our legs towards ourselves, we can. We could have a bent or straight knee, whichever one feels better. Uh, probably more of us are like way out here than me. But as we get closer and our bodies relax, we can loop our strap around our hands or walk our hands up the strap. Continue pulling the leg in. And it might feel good. I know I said a static stretching video. It might feel good to sort of come out and readjust and then go back into it. Let's hold here a few more breaths. We'll do the same movement, but we'll take our strap in the right hand closer up, and we might like to counterweight it with our left arm, depending on how long your strap is. We're just going to let the leg come out to the side, that's all. So it probably becomes more of an inner thigh stretch. And again, we have this option. We can do it with a bent leg, which is half a happy baby, or we can do it with a straight leg, which is a variation of hand to big toe. So it's not that one variation is better than the other, they're just two variations of the same pose. And let's not forget this other leg that's giving us our stability. So we can press our heel down, we can point or flex the foot, and our left arm can actually come on out to counterbalance 
this leg coming up to the side. So the weight of our leg might start to pull our body into a roll sideways, and we can have our left arm out to prevent that. Noticing where we're feeling the stretch. This one's kind of a tough one to hang on to because of the weight of our leg. So let's go ahead and bring it on back. We can release our strap. Again, maybe give the leg a hug. Stretch it out. Internally, externally rotate. And we're ready for the other side. Let's give our left leg a big hug. We can press down now through the right heel. We can point or flex, or maybe a little bit of both. And this time we know where we're going, right? And if you actually do have, like I have quite a long strap, you may even want to double the strap up. And then we have less extra sort of flopping around and getting in our way. You might like how it feels with a long strap completely your choice. But let's remember what were we doing on the other side? We had the option to reach up high with our shoulders coming away or working on our posture, drawing our shoulders down towards the floor, maybe bending our elbows and pulling down. So if you have a, a really st short strap with no stretch, it probably won't be possible to bring the elbows all the way down. And let's be patient with this because we just came out of a pose that we've been holding for a while. So it had loosened up, it was feeling nice, and while we're here, we're coming into a tight position. So we have to wait maybe a minute for it to loosen up. Maybe a little movement, coming out, going back in, adjusting the foot. The other side right getting closer to that loose point that we had on the first side and it may be interesting to note if this feels like your loose side or your tight side. And there may be a reason for that. I know I injured my left hamstring maybe about a decade ago, and it has never been the same since. Or it could be something much more recent that you were balancing on one leg, trying to do something, and you had no need to do it on the other leg, so you just tightened up one side for the short term. But it might be interesting to note. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna take the left hand to hold the string, the string, the strap on our left foot. Depending on how much strap we have, if you have a really long strap, you could keep holding onto it with the opposite hand pulling down, or our opposite hand could come out to the side to counterbalance. And then we let our foot come out. So I'm going to turn just to see you a bit better while we're here. And you can stay exactly as you are. So we have our counterweight arm and our right to the side leg. Staying stable, our right foot can press down. And you may notice that you're actually working pretty hard to stay here. My 
might be working really hard to hold your leg out. It might feel really tight or be shaking a lot. So sometimes we call that kind of the comfort edge. So we're not completely relaxed, just hanging out, enjoying every moment. There is some discomfort, but it's okay. It's okay to be straining. It's okay for our muscles to have that little shake going on. And then hopefully over time, we get used to stretching. We get used to moving our bodies in a certain way. And it's sort of like our bodies or our muscles know the drill. Oh yeah, I'm coming into that leg out to the side pose. Okay, I've got it. Let's bring it back through. We're actually done with our strap. I want to give our leg a hug. We can do a long stretch here. And we're almost done. Let's go ahead and bring our knees to chest. We're going to come into a twist, letting our knees twist all the way to one side. So maybe bring your knees to me. And we can open our arms out into a T. We might like to have hand on knee to keep them there. And again, probably feeling our breath more in our rib cage and less in our bellies. Relaxing our shoulders, trying not to have movement of our shoulders up towards our ears again. We can use some strength in our arms, pressing down to pull our legs up. We might even be walking our feet back to the center. And let's take them the other way. You may find you have a really small range of rotation. We don't tend to do a heck of a lot of rotation in daily life, unless you spend a lot of time sitting in the driver's seat, reaching into the back seat. In which case, again, you may notice you have one really stretchy side and one really tight side. Just something to be aware of. And over time, hopefully we build more balance one side to the other. We can press down using our strength to come back through center. Again, we can draw knees to chest and let our feet go. We're actually going to use our blocks. So again, I'm going to switch to be with you. We'll go ahead and take our block underneath our pelvis. So if you have, um, like I said, a thick cushion or even if you're in bed, you have a pillow, we can use that here. And this will be our last one for today. So we did a lot of work bringing our legs in, tightening up the front of the hip. We're gonna do some work opening out the front of the hip. So we can just lift the hips up. If you have a block to take under, fantastic. If you don't, that's okay too. This is our last pose and actually sometimes people like to hold this for five, six, seven, eight minutes. Um, and if you are really tight through here, so this is, my athletes often get really tight through here, sprinters, Hockey players really tight through the front of the hip. We can leave our arms out to the side. Again, maybe an opportunity to slide their shoulder blades down away from our ears. And we're probably noticing a feeling of inflation in the front of the body. So we can relax our abdominals, breathe into the belly, front of the ribs, up into the chest. We can stay exactly as we are. You may like to straighten out one leg or both legs. So you'll know that the cushion or block isn't in the right spot. If it's too high up in your low back, you're probably going to have pain in the low back and just sort of your belly pressing forward and you'll know it's too low down if your bum is kind of falling off and you're tucking under. But that Goldilocks just right spot is when we're on the back of the sacrum. 
So if you were wearing high-waisted jeans, maybe where your jean pockets are, not low-waisted jeans, those tiny little pockets right on your bum cheeks, like just the uh, where your bum starts to meet your back and it's the bone of your pelvis. So I'm gonna leave us here and I'll leave some music for you to enjoy. Maybe we like to take hands to belly to be more aware of our belly breath. And while we hold this pose, of course, it might get to be a lot. We might want to come back to just one leg bent, both legs bent. We may like to take the block away entirely and come into relaxation. So Yogi's choice, we'll spend some time breathing and enjoying length through the front of the body.